This evening, DPP orders further investigation into rape allegation against local government minister. Fatal collision on Hampshire Public Road. Two dead, four hospitalized as car and electric bike collide. Cano officers accused of diamond theft. Granted bail, please not guilty. In the region, trigger happy law. New police powers stir controversy in Chile. An internationally Ukraine war. Death toll from Kramatorsk attack rises to 10. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for June 28, 2023. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the Director of Public Prosecutions has instructed the police to thoroughly investigate the rape allegations made by a 16-year-old girl against Nigel Darmlal, the Minister of Local Government. Assistant Commissioner Weldon Blanham, the head of the Police Force Criminal Investigations Department, confirmed the DPP's request for additional inquiries. The case file, which was sent to the DPP on June 22, was returned to the police earlier today. According to reports, the DPP's chambers provided legal advice to the police, urging them to delve deeper into the case. In response to the allegations, Minister Darmlal, represented by his lawyer Nigel Hughes, has vehemently denied all accusations. While on $1 million station bail, the minister has voluntarily taken an indefinite leave from his official duties. Highlighting the significance of the investigation, the DPP's chambers emphasized that this case is of national interest, emphasizing the importance of considering all statements and evidence before providing legal advice to the gang police force. Meanwhile, opposition parties and non-governmental organizations continue to call for Minister Damla's dismissal or resignation from his ministerial post. As the investigation progresses, the teenage victim remains under the protective care of the Ministry of Human Services, Child Care and Protection Agency. She receives comprehensive support, including counseling, during this challenging time. In other news, two Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit officers, Ani Kuzana and Jermaine Goddard, accused of stealing diamonds from a Surinamese individual, appeared before Magistrate Rabindranath Singh via Zoom on Tuesday. The incident, which occurred on June 20th in Skeldon, Quarantine Burbies, led to the charge of simple larceny against the duo. Both Hosanna from Diamond Grove, East Magdamarara, and Goddard from Water Street, Bagastang, East Magdamarara, pleaded not guilty to the charge. During the hearing, each officer was granted bail in the amount of $300,000 with the condition that they report to the police every other Friday. The case was adjourned to August 3rd for a submission of reports and statements. Hazana and Goddard were arrested on June 23rd after allegedly stealing diamonds from Gabriel Manichan, whom they had detained for possessing an illegal firearm. Following their apprehension, Goddard was taken to a hospital as he had reportedly swallowed some of the stolen diamonds. However, medical professionals were able to retrieve the diamonds. On the other hand, Hosanna allegedly sold his portion of the stolen loot to an unidentified buyer. Authorities have confirmed that the search is underway for the alleged buyer of the stolen diamonds. We now turn our attention to the Ghana Police Force in its investigation into an accident that claimed the lives of two on the Hampshire Public Road in Quarantine Burbies on Tuesday, June 27th. The incident involved a motor car PRR 17985 driven by 24-year-old Brandon Ramsamy, who unfortunately lost his life in the accident, and an electric bike. The rider, identified as 60-year-old Munir Khan, also passed away. According to initial investigations, the motor car, along with the driver and four occupants, was traveling east on the northern drive lane of the Hampshire Public Road at a high speed when the driver lost control. The car collided with the electric bike, which was heading west along the southern footpath of the road. The impact caused the electric bike rider to be thrown into the southern parapet and into a drain resulting in injuries to his body. Simultaneously, the car overturned and sustained extensive damage. The driver and occupants of the car also suffered injuries. The car driver and the electric bike rider were found unconscious and promptly transported to the Port Moran Public Hospital. Unfortunately, they were pronounced dead on arrival. Their bodies were transported to the Ramu Funeral Home for post-mortem examinations. The occupants of the car, who were conscious, were attended to by the doctors at the Port Moran Public Hospital 
and transferred to the New Amsterdam Public Hospital where they are receiving medical treatment. Stick around when we return GRA launches registration for electric bikes to enhance road safety and four individuals charged by Suku in conspiracy and forgery case following WhatsApp scam. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Smart Minds Educational Institute Offering preschool, nursery and primary levels Finally a school that is every parent's dream Located at 69 Crow Street Offering academic excellence Trained qualified teachers Small class sizes Personalized gear And one-to-one -one attention for your little ones At Smart Minds Register for full-time or evening classes Daily practice pass exam papers For proficiency at the grade 2, 4 and 6 assessment And CXE exam preparedness Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery or primary level, come to Smart Mind located at 69 Earl Street or call 231-4885 or 600 to enroll now. Tweet and they go tweet, tweet, tweet. Tweety, tweet, 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 I hear birds outside. The teachers of Kiss Kitty Kids and Harpy Eagles. Tweet, tweet, show. Children, what time is it? Tweet, tweet. Baby, 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 Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, five spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and duck in plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Rally go to the supermarket, and she pop up buy up not enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. Owners of electric bikes in Guyana can now register their cycles at the Licensed Revenue Authority Office Lamaha Railway Embankment, CAM and Lamaha Street, and integrated regional tax offices countrywide. According to the Guyana Revenue Authority, the registration requirements is in compliance with recent amendments to the Motor Vehicles and Road Traffic Act, which aims to address the increasing number of road fatalities and incidents involving electric bikes. To register their electric motorcycles, owners must provide a complete registration application form, purchase receipt or affidavit of lost purchase receipt, and a valid identification document. In cases where electric motorcycles lack a chassis or frame number, GRA will assign a unique identification number. During a three-month voluntary registration period, 
GRA and the Ghana Police Force will focus on educating the public about the new regulations after which enforcement will be implemented. Compliance with the registration process is important and standard rates for the registration and motor vehicle revenue license will apply. Holders of valid driver's license must operate the electric motorcycles on the roadway. The Ghana Police Force is also actively engaging in educating road users about the amended regulations. In other news, four individuals were charged by the Special Organized Crime Unit with multiple counts of conspiracy to commit a felony and forgery. Khadija Long of Central Amelia's Ward Linden, Wayne Halley, a driver of First Street Mocker, East Bank de Marara, Kevon McBean, a postal clerk of Amelia's Ward, and 36-year-old Nigerian Matthew Nwaku, Unemployed of Duncan Street Kitty, George Dung appeared before Principal Magistrate Rondell Weaver at the Linden Magistrates Court, where they pleaded not guilty. Long was charged with one count of conspiracy and was granted bail in the sum of $50,000. Halley faced 10 counts of conspiracy and was granted bail in the sum of $300,000. McLean faced three counts of forgery and was granted bail in the sum of $100,000. Meanwhile, Mwaku faced 10 counts of conspiracy and was remanded to prison. The case were adjourned until July 27, 2023 for statements. The charges stem from a scheme where eight females were befriended by a male Caucasian on WhatsApp, leading to the establishment of a long-distance relationship. The male claimed to be sending packages containing items such as clothes, bags, watches, chains, and U.S. currency to Guyana. The victims received WhatsApp messages from a person posing as a delivery agent from Delta Courier Service who claimed the packages were in transit in Chicago, USA. The victims were instructed to send cash to Long, Haley, and M. Mwaku, who facilitate delivery. In total, the victims spent $804,000 but never received any packages. Additionally, McBean was contacted by Halley and asked to assist in processing transactions at the Mackenzie Post Office in Linden. Between June 22, 2022 and July 14, 2022, McBean colluded with Halley to forge signatures on several Ghana Post Office Corporation inland money orders and collected the cash. The matters were reported to Suku, leading to investigations and subsequent charges. Don't go away after the break. UK fishing industry pressures to bring in more skilled workers and Ukraine war. Death toll from Kramatorsk attack rises to 10. Good, good girl, forget things. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, casserole, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate soak for all you know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote the name wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. And they go tweet, 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 I hear birds outside. The I teachers of Kiss Kitty Kids and Harpy Eagles. Eagles, Tweet Tweet Show. Children, what time is it? Tweet Tweet! The life of a teacher in and out of school, Sunday, July 2nd, at the National Cultural Center. Doors open at 7 p.m. and admissions $1,000 and $1,500. 
Smart Minds Educational Institute, offering preschool, nursery, and primary levels. Finally, a school that is every parent's dream. Located at 69 Crow Street, offering academic excellence, trained, qualified teachers, small class sizes, personalized gear, and one to one attention for your little ones. At Smart Minds, register for full time or evening classes, daily practice pass exam papers for proficiency at the grade 2, 4, and 6 assessment, and CXE exam preparedness. Or join our Becca Phonics reading and writing program. So if your child is for preschool, nursery, or primary level, come to Smart Mind, located at 69 Old Street, or call 231-4885 or 600-9229 to enroll now. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Human rights activists in Chile says that they are disturbed by a new law that allows police to use lethal force under the presumption of innocence. Critics say that what has become known as the trigger happy law is not the answer to rising crime in what used to be considered the safest country in Latin America. Al Jazeera's Lucy Newman reports. Javiera Castillo is learning how to use a gun and says that after just a few lessons, she's mastering how to hold, aim, and fire a weapon. She never dreamed of acquiring such a skill until she and her boyfriend became victims of rising crime in Chile. It was terrifying. They stole our vehicle at gunpoint. I was left in shock. I was afraid to go out at night. Statistically, Chile remains one of the safest countries in a very unsafe region. But in a country where armed robberies and murders were once rare, violent crime has soared in the last few years. You can tell that people are looking over their shoulders a lot more than they used to. According to official figures, murder has gone up 33%, violent robberies 63%, and kidnappings, which was something absolutely unheard of in Chile up until very recently, by 77%. According to the government, much of this violence has been imported, for example, drive-by robberies or murders on motorcycles. This and even more gruesome forms of crime has turned this type of violence into the number one concern for the vast majority of Chileans. In April, three policemen were shot dead in the line of duty. Chileans took to the streets to demand radical measures to combat crime and protect police. Under fierce pressure, the left-wing government signed a controversial law on April 6th that gives police the right to use lethal force if necessary under the presumption of innocence. Unlike before, the onus is now on the victim or family members to prove that police abuse their power. It's been nicknamed the trigger-happy law by critics including Amnesty International and other human rights organizations. The only thing the law does is increase the possibility of human rights violations being committed, as well as increasing impunity by state agents when they commit abuses against citizens. Already a number of policemen who are under investigation for abuse of power and violence have had their cases dropped since the law is retroactive. But for now, that's not the main concern for most ordinary citizens who hope that unlike in many neighboring countries, crime will not become just another normal part of life. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago. Internationally, the fishing industry in the United Kingdom is struggling due to the lack of skilled workers. It has been added to a list of at-risk sectors. 
Since leaving the European Union, many foreign workers had to leave the UK, but now the government is trying to get them back. Al Jazeera's Nivi Barker reports. It takes many hands on deck to land the week's catch. UK waters are teeming with opportunities, but there aren't enough British workers to crew the boats and process the produce. We've had problems trying to recruit young people into the industry for a while. It just doesn't seem to be a job that young people are wanting to do anymore, unfortunately. We've been setting up apprenticeships and, and trying to get young people in that way, but it's, it's still not working in terms of homegrown talent. The government's responded to the labour crisis in the fishing industry by quietly agreeing to allow more foreign workers into the country, despite touting control over immigration as a main reason for leaving the EU. In fact, three years after Brexit, UK net migration has never been higher. The problem is there just simply aren't enough British workers willing to labour in dangerous and often cramped conditions. And also the tight profit margins mean that wages can be extremely unpredictable. Now under a new government scheme they're allowing employers to hire many more foreign workers and paying them potentially substantially less than local hires. In order to keep the industry afloat it needs all the labour it can get. 30% of the UK's fishing crews are foreign, recruited through agencies from countries such as Ghana and the Philippines, where almost the entire crew of this vessel is from. Roland Berlian's here eight months a year because the money's good. Lower salaries could drive much needed workers elsewhere. Money in here is really good, really, really good. I really appreciate it and the people, they treat us very good. Yeah, food is okay, accommodation is okay. Everything is very good. Industry leaders are now urging the government to loosen its rules to help resolve the labour shortage, including scrapping strict English language requirements. The irony is the fishing industry was a poster child for those advocating leaving the EU. But the promised boom hasn't happened. And the UK still doesn't have many of the freedoms of other coastal states, including EU member France. Fisherman of 35 years, David Wilson, feels lied to. Yeah, we were. We were sold down the river for Brexit. We were promised gold and we got coal. <laughs> Fishing joins construction on the government's shortage occupation list. Retail and hospitality are lobbying hard to be included too, after losing huge numbers of staff from the European Union when the freedom to work in the UK ended. Tacit recognition, say many of these fishermen, of Brexit's failure to make Britain a better market for business. Neve Barker, Al Jazeera, Brixham. And finally, the death toll from Karma Turk's attack has risen to 10, with two more bodies, including a fourth child, pulled out of the wreckage. Officials says at least three children are among the 10 victims. Police said at least 61 people were wounded in Tuesday's missile attack, which turned a crowded restaurant into a pile of twisted beams. Al Jazeera's Asset Beach reports. The attack came as people were having their evening meal in one of the few restaurants still operating in the eastern city of Kramatorsk. I ran here after the explosion because I rented a cafe here. Everything has been blown out. There's nothing. No windows, no doors. All I see is destruction, fear and horror. This is the 21st century. Among the nine killed was a child and two teenagers. A one-year-old was also injured. All the destruction, it's shocking to see in real life. When you see it in photos, it's different. What you see on TV doesn't even begin to show what you see in real life. Twisted metal and rubble is all that remains as rescue teams tried to look for survivors. Ambulances took the injured away. The shockwave from the missile damaged neighbouring buildings and sent glass flying. The city used to have a population of 150,000, but since the war started, many have left. It's 25 kilometers from the front line to the east of the country. Modern weaponry means it's well within range of Russian guns. Each such manifestation of terror proves over and over again to us and to the whole world that Russia deserves only one thing as a result of everything it has done, defeat and a tribunal fair and legal trials against all Russian murderers and terrorists. It's not the first time the city has been targeted. It routinely comes under attack from Russia, 
Last year, 63 people were killed as they waited outside the train station. Officials in Kyiv have been monitoring recent events in Russia. The attack in Kramatorsk is a reminder that despite the mutiny by the Wagner Group, it has no impact on the front lines here and the war continues. Russia continues to strike Ukraine with fatal consequences. Assad Beg, Al Jazeera, Kyiv, Ukraine. This brings us to the end of the global and regional news coverage. Up next is the three-day weather forecast. And that's Safety B2 headline news for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast class and Friday evening at 5 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.